I'm in the Brisbane suburb of Seven Hills and this old Queenslander is going on the market. Depending upon the buyer, the future of its garden is unknown. This garden's been here at least since the 1930s. Three generations of one family have lovingly called this place home. And while there's nothing of any heritage value, the owner is sentimental enough to see what's worth saving to be reused elsewhere. Instead of demolishing a garden, deconstructing it and saving valuable plants only takes a little bit of thought, some labour and, of course, transport. The first step towards deconstructing a garden is identifying which plants to keep and which can go. And you may need a machete like this to cut a pathway to your garden gold. Spotting your garden celebrities is a bit more challenging when an established garden has become overgrown, like this one. Ask any Queenslander and they'll tell you just how quickly things can get out of hand during a wet summer. Like many older gardens, this one has a number of environmental weeds and their weediness wasn't known at the time they were planted. For example, this antigonon was available commercially until recently. So saving and transporting weeds like this to a new location is shifting the problem and it could harm the environment. Some surprising examples include Brisbane garden favourites like Queen or Cocos Palm, Tradescantia zebrina and this, Creeping Inch Plant. Creeping Inch Plant is widely grown but hard to get rid of. It's a long-lived perennial ground cover that forms dense mats and it will regrow from stems and self-seed readily. It's a weed you'd really rather leave behind. Each local authority will maintain a list of weeds or a website to help you identify the status of plants before you move them. This is the Brisbane City Council weed management tool. Now the time it takes to identify a weed online is a lot less than the time it takes to eradicate them if you move them around. We also live with invasive pests, things like fire ants and pathogens, diseases which can be spread with the movement of garden materials. So when you're digging something up, check the roots, make sure they look clean. And if you live in a containment area, contact your local biosecurity agency. Like weeds, there are some plants that you won't want to take. They're simply not worth the effort. There's plenty of Lamandra hystrix, which, while useful, is easy to find and very cheap to buy. And while this bird of paradise might be tempting, it's one that's simply in the too hard basket. They're notorious for having incredibly strong, deep roots and such dense, tough growth that you can't easily split or transplant one as advanced as this. This one is way beyond a mattock. You'll need a bobcat to shift it, so why not save your back and look elsewhere? Underneath this morning glory is a bottle brush, and these seed are a perfect way for plants to move. After all, a seed is a whole plant, packed and ready to travel through time and space. I've spotted this faded Queensland classic, Bushman's Poison, but don't be fooled by the name. It's planted for its pretty, sweet-smelling spring flowers which bees adore. Once popular, it's now a bit of a fashion victim, but I'm still a fan. The garden sits on shale and the soil is thin and it drains fast, but Bushman's poison can tough it out. This survivor can be readily propagated from seed when they're ripe, but do wear gloves to protect yourself. Another group of plants that travel well is bulbs. Now the leaves and the roots are short-lived. So what I've done is I've shortened the length of the leaves to conserve moisture. The most important part to conserve is the bulb because that is the energy store and it may well have enough energy to carry flowers next year. Some, like Hippiastrum, can be expensive to buy and slow to establish. Who can resist a few more happy hippies at home? You just dig them up. The soil's fallen away and it's ready to go. 
While Dracaena aren't exactly uncommon, what this plant offers is instant size through its maturity. You take the main trunk and, using a sharp saw, cut it cleanly at one end. Now what you've got here is a supersized cutting. Now if you want to use it as an instant effect tree, what I've done in the past is to tie these against the fence, let the base touch the ground, and over summer it'll take root, and then you plant it out where you want to grow it. But there's another alternative. Each one of these shoot tips can be cut off and turned to instant cuttings, and you can bed them out rather like geraniums. It's not as unusual, but it's still uncommon. By the steps of this old Queenslander is a large frangipani. It's home to an old clump of elkhorn fern, and it's an iconic Queensland combination. In winter, the frangipani loses its leaves, and the winter sunshine benefits the fern. But in summer, when the leaves return, they shade the fern from the hot summer sun. In return, the elkhorn fern gathers leaves, storing nutrients and moisture and drip feeding the frangipani. Together, it's a blissful marriage. The elkhorns transplant easily at any time of the year. A large clump like this can be multiplied by splitting into manageable pieces. I'm going to use a sharp pruning saw and you simply remove individual plants and then, once they're loose, you can pot them up just using ordinary potting mix or mount them onto a new tree. There you go. Frangipani can be propagated. It's traditional to do them in winter and long stems like this will heal and seal really well. If you do it in summer, then there's a risk that they may rot. Of course, a frangipani as big as this could also be dug up, as long as you've got some strong friends and a series of digging tools. But if you have a look just down here, there are roots. This entire stem has produced roots in amongst the fern. So this is a large cutting, and that is a prize worth having. This planting under the steps is a classic signature of a heritage Queensland garden. And these cast iron beauties, Aspidistras, are the perfect plant. They grow slowly, and it's that slow nature that makes them valuable. They're as tough as nails, permanently lush and green, and you'll find they're just as happy in a shady spot outdoors as in your lounge room. These can be dug up wholesale and repotted, or you can cut clumps and break them up into smaller sized plants. Ferns can also be repurposed in the same way, and this garden has some good examples. There's native kangaroo fern, plus there's this exotic rabbit's foot fern, and these are easily transported. And this is a crested form of the Boston fern. Now what I've done here is I've reused an old hanging basket, I've lined it with an old plastic bag to conserve moisture. Now I've put a couple of holes in the bottom of the bag so it doesn't fill up with water, and I've disguised the bag by using coconut fibre, and I've planted the fern in potting mix. Now what made this work is I kept it damp and in the shade, and that means it didn't lose a single frond. Over time, this fern will grow all the way around the basket and it will convert it into a sphere, a living sphere of ferny foliage. And the same effect can be achieved with the other two ferns. And there's Epiphyllum hookeri, a classic old Queensland garden plant. This spineless, night-flowering cactus is easily propagated by cuttings. By deconstructing a garden, you're enabling plants to fulfil their mission, to soften and beautify the world around us. And it needn't cost a packet. In fact, the most expensive outlay might be hiring transport.